and then look, this is what we're going to be fixing. That's pretty bad. Let's clean this area up. You see, so this is like some sort of coating on it to protect it, like some kind of rock guard. It looks like it's paint. And then this red part that's thicker. But the red part looks like it only goes up to about this much. And then they painted it again. But what we're finding out is that it's really shiny underneath. Probably did it as soon as they bought it. The original owners. So that's good. Let's do this. Oh. Oh, this is the gel coat. Damn. All right. open it up just a little bit more that way the uh, resin and the fiberglass I'm gonna put on here new something to bite onto and then the rest could be filled in with gel coat there's a big old hole right there Should be ready to accept gel coat. I'm just gonna clean it with acetone. Here's the other one. I mean, it looks pretty rough, but I'm hoping that with the gel coat, it'll be filled in and then it'll be all blended nicely once I have it cured and I can start buffing it out. Again, I'm just gonna be focusing on just these areas right now because the goal is for the next day tomorrow, we're just gonna put the frame in take the camper home with us there's still a lot more work to do around here but for now it's just this so this is the gel coat that I'm gonna be using there was a different brand that I was gonna get a little bit better one I think but it didn't come with the pigments and this one did and since this is not actually white it's like a cream almost almond color I'm gonna try to match it up with the pigments that this one came with. So we'll see how it goes. Never used this one before, but at least it's in an area that you won't really see too much 
with the cover on. You'll see just about this side of it, but this side and all this should be covered. At this point, I was just racing against the sunset because it was getting dark real fast. And right here, it looks like it's actually pretty close, but there was still like a red hue to it. And so I had to bring that down using blue. And right about here, I got pretty close. But then I added more blue just to get it the shade a little bit better and then I added brown and that's when it pretty much spiraled in the wrong direction because it became brighter and there were still red hue and so I essentially had to make a whole bunch of corrections and just cut it short and stop right about here since I was running out of light this is where we started and we essentially just started adding that yellow mustard color by itself then we have to start adding brown right about here but the brown introduced like a reddish color and then over here we start adding the blue just to shade it and we started getting closer right about here we got really close and then I added more brown started sticking out again then I added more blue had to restart and then I started adding yellow again and we arrived right here, which I think this is pretty much the color that we were looking for. 16, 17, 18. And at this point, I realized there was just too much blue in it, but oh well. So now it's too cold outside. It's just, it's really warm air. It's gonna help it actually activate. So check it out, we have the gel coat on this. And I had to kind of layer it up a little bit, that's why it looks all <laughs> messed up. But also because the sun's at an angle right now, it's sunset. But that's good, it was able to help me actually see where I needed to layer it up. These are the new cross members and we have to put some some of these spacers They're like rubber these are the original ones so i cut these off of the ones right here i just sacrificed them and cut them in half so what we don't want is for the fiberglass shell to rest on this just the metal because this has like a sharp edge and so this would eventually start with the vibration start digging into the uh the shell so with this kind of protects it So we cut this when we pretty much didn't need to. So we'll use this to join this again.
letting out the air because we have to have this go underneath. And I'm just like barely any clearance. cracked right here as well. Here's a fiberglass. And it almost looks like there should have been a piece of rubber right here, but there wasn't. But in real time, this is the speed at which it goes. I use these jacks because they only go straight up and down. And so the alignment process is a little bit easier than the car jack version. We have it lowered, but now we just gotta fine tune it and hopefully the all four of the main bolts can fit in. We're gonna have to just shift it around. Here it is back home. But just look at that. It's so freaking nice. It's just like the perfect size right there. Look how nice it looks. And we and we haven't even touched the exterior. We haven't polished anything. We have, we have touched absolutely nothing yet. So I guess the next phase, what we're gonna be focusing on is I think just to flip the axles because when we were driving at home, when we initially came out of the property, it sloped the driveway up and to the main road and just in bringing it up there, we heard it scrape on the metal. <clears throat> so it has this, this is where it hit. It has that to protect all of it. We only have about six inches before this hits. So if we flip the axles, or in other words, put the springs from being under the axle to on top of the axle, because we weld it in, the new mounts that you see right there. There's one there, there's one there on top. That should give us like about, I think, four and a half inches. Okay, so that's the height before. And 
you can see it has a lot more clearance now. For those of you that might have the B17 model or the B19, <laughs> if you want to get a little bit more clearance, you can do what people call them the axle flip, but it's really just putting the springs from being underneath is where they were originally to now on top. And you do that if you're using the original axle by welding in yourself, the same kind of bracket, but on top. And then you can reuse the same U-bolts or just get some new ones like I did because it came with a kit. I think it was about like 50 bucks and I was able to do both the axles. But it's just the same bracket, you weld it up on top. And now the U-bolts face the other way, facing up. And that's really it. You get about four and a half inches more in this case. The axles, they sit the same relative height from the ground. That's important to note, but you do get more height from the ground to the frame. do some sanding and we're gonna blend it in. I'm gonna start with this one. We're learning. <laughs> so better than it was before. Still kind of see the blotchiness of where it was because the color matching isn't perfect. Because I had put too much blue tint when I was doing the color matching. And so that's why you can see that it's a, a different shade, essentially. But I mean, it's silky smooth. It's it's repaired, it's not opened how it was before. There's still a lot of spider cracks on the gel coat. But maybe when I have a little bit more time and the weather's better, I'll probably do it again maybe and hopefully I can get the color matching just right. When I was doing it, I was fighting the sunset. I was running out of light and I couldn't really see. 
but I mean, you know, from a distance, it's not, it's not too bad. It gave me a good opportunity to practice it in an area where the propane cover is gonna cover pretty much most of it. <laughs> so there you go.